Hey everyone, ready to tackle machine learning. We're gonna do a deep dive today and make sure you can handle any ML challenge that comes your way, whether it's for an exam or just to impress your friends. We'll break down the basics and cover all the essentials you need. Machine learning can seem kind of intimidating, right? Yeah. All those algorithms and data swirling around, but really, it's fascinating stuff once you get into it. Yeah, and it's changing pretty much everything. Okay, so to kick things off, let's talk about the different types of machine learning. Sure. There's supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and then there's deep learning. Yeah. Think of these as different ways a computer can learn, right? Yeah. So with supervised learning, it's like teaching a kid about different fruits. You show them an apple, you say apple. Then you show them a banana, you say banana. Right. You're giving the computer labeled data, like a, a set of flashcards with the questions and the answers. And it uses those examples to learn the pattern. Exactly. And then it can apply that knowledge to new data it's never seen before. Like maybe a new fruit it's never encountered. Exactly. Okay, so how about a real world example? Something that'll really show the power of supervised learning. Well, think about applying for a loan. The bank needs to figure out if you're likely to repay it, right? Sure. They use supervised learning to analyze all sorts of things, your credit history, your income, other factors to predict how creditworthy you are. So it's not just a random guess. They're using data to make a smarter decision. Exactly. And the more data the algorithm is trained on, the more accurate those predictions become. So it's always learning and getting better. Right. Okay, now there are different approaches within supervised learning, right? Like regression and classification. Yep, that's right. So regression, that's like predicting a number on a continuous scale. Like say you want to predict the price of a house, taking into account its size, location, features, all that. Regression could help you do that. Exactly. Okay, makes sense. Now what about classification? How's that different? Classification is about sorting things into categories, like filtering your emails. Is this spam or not spam? So it's more like a yes or no decision or assigning it to a specific group. Right. Or is this customer going to click on this ad or not? Yes or no. So it's all about making those kinds of categorizations. Uh -huh. Got it. So supervised learning is like having a teacher showing you examples, helping you predict things or classify them. Mm. But then we have unsupervised learning. Is that more like letting the computer figure things out on its own? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. In unsupervised learning, we don't give the computer labeled examples. It's more like giving it a puzzle without the picture on the box. Oh, so it has to find those patterns and relationships all by itself. Exactly. It has to, and that can be pretty challenging, but it's also super powerful. One of the ways unsupervised learning does this is through dimension reduction. Dimension reduction. Okay, that sounds a bit complicated. Can you break that down for me? Sure. Imagine you have a massive data set tons of information. It could be customer data, their age, income, purchasing habits, all sorts of things. Dimension reduction helps simplify all that data by finding the most important patterns. Okay, so it's like decluttering a really messy room, finding those key pieces that define the space. Exactly. It helps us zero in on what really matters. Got it. So that's dimension reduction. What else can unsupervised learning do? Another really useful technique is clustering. Let's say you're a marketer trying to get a better understanding of your customer base. Yeah. Clustering algorithms can group customers who share certain characteristics like their buying habits or demographics. So instead of manually segmenting customers, you let the algorithm do the work for you. Precisely. It's like having an army of these little data detectives working to find those natural groupings within your customers. Wow, that could save a lot of time and effort, and it could lead to more effective marketing campaigns. Absolutely. Okay, starting to see how powerful this unsupervised learning can be. Yeah. Now... Before we dig deeper into all the specific algorithms, there's one concept we got to talk about. Overfitting. What exactly is overfitting? Okay, think about it like this. You're studying for a test and you memorize every single word in the textbook. You might ace that specific test, but right. you haven't actually learned the concept, so you're going to struggle when you see new questions. So it's like the algorithm gets too specialized in the data it's seen before it can't adapt to new situations. Right, or it's like a custom tailored suit. It fits one person perfectly, but nobody else can wear it. So how do we prevent our algorithms from becoming overfit? One way is to keep the model simple. Just like a clear, concise explanation is better than a rambling one. Keep it simple, makes sense. Any other ways to prevent overfitting? Yeah, we use something called cross-validation. Imagine you're trying out a new recipe. You wouldn't just taste it yourself, right? Yeah. You'd want your friends to try it too, get different opinions. Make sure it works for more than just one person. Exactly. 
In cross-validation, we divide the data into different sets, some for training the algorithm, some for testing it. Helps ensure it performs well on data it hasn't encountered before. Oh, that's smart. Okay, now let's get to the fun part. Let's dive into some specific algorithms. It's like opening a toolbox and checking out all the cool gadgets, right? Absolutely. Each algorithm has its own strengths, its own way of learning and solving problems. So it's important to know which tool is right for the job. All right, sounds exciting. Let's start with some supervised learning algorithms. First up, penalized regression. Sounds a little intimidating. Not as scary as it sounds. Imagine trying to predict the stock market. Okay. You've got all these factors to consider, interest rates, company earnings, even the weather. Penalized regression helps you figure out which of those factors are really driving those stock prices. So it's like a detective with a magnifying glass trying to find those key clues in a really complex case. Exactly. What else do we have in our supervised learning toolbox? Well, we have the support vector machine, or SVM for short. You can think of it like drawing a line to separate two groups of data. Like, let's say you want to classify emails into spam and not spam. SVM helps you draw that line to separate those two categories as cleanly as possible. So SVM is the line drawing champion. What about K nearest neighbor? That sounds a little friendlier. It is. K nearest neighbor, KNN, it works on a simple idea. Similar things belong together. If you're trying to recommend a movie to someone, KNN would look at others with similar tastes and suggest movies they enjoyed. So it's like saying, hey, if you like those movies, you'll probably like this one too. Right. It's all about finding patterns based on similarity. Okay, K nearest neighbor, the ultimate matchmaker. What's next? Next up is the classification and regression tree. CART. It breaks down a problem into a series of yes or no decisions, kind of like a flowchart. It's great for understanding the logic behind a decision. So CART is all about those clear-cut decision paths. Mm -hmm. And our last supervised learning algorithm for today. We've got Ensemble Learning and Random Forest. Think of it like getting multiple opinions from experts before making a decision. Instead of relying on just one algorithm, you combine predictions from many. Exactly. It's like the wisdom of the crowd, but with algorithms. Ensemble Learning, because two heads, or algorithms, are better than one. Okay, <laughs> we've covered a lot with supervised learning. Ready to move on to the more mysterious world of unsupervised learning and its algorithms. Absolutely. This is where things get really interesting. Unsupervised learning, it's like um, giving the computer a bunch of ingredients and letting it figure out a new recipe. You know, we don't tell it what to make. It just explores and discovers. So kind of like giving it free reign in the kitchen and see what it comes up with. What kind of algorithms are we talking about here? One of the most common ones is principal component analysis, PCA. Okay. So imagine you're trying to visualize data that has like hundreds of dimensions. We can't really wrap our heads around that as humans, right? Yeah, I can barely handle three dimensions, let alone hundreds. Exactly. So PCA helps us reduce that complexity. It finds those most important patterns. Like, think of it as um, taking a 3D object and looking at its shadow. Nah. So you're simplifying it, but still capturing the essential shape. Exactly. It helps us see the big picture, cut through the noise. That's really cool. Okay, what other unsupervised learning tricks do we have? Clustering is another one. Remember that marketing example? Yeah. Well, clustering algorithms can group customers together based on, you know, their behavior, their demographics, all sorts of things. So instead of manually trying to segment those customers, you just let the algorithm do it for you. Exactly. It's like having, I don't know, a whole team of data detectives, right? Working behind the scenes, finding those natural groups. That could be a huge time saver. Oh, yeah. And it can make those campaigns much more targeted. Right. So you're not wasting effort on people who aren't interested. And it's not just marketing. Clustering is used in all sorts of fields, from genetics to uh, even astronomy, it helps us make sense of complex data. Wow. Okay, unsupervised learning is definitely growing on me. It's like um, giving the computer a treasure map and seeing what it digs up. That's a great way to put it. So are you ready to move on to uh, neural networks, deep learning, those more, I guess you could say, brain-inspired approaches? Yeah, let's dive in. I've always found neural networks a bit mysterious. Well, they are inspired by how our brains work. They have these interconnected nodes that process information, just like neurons. But instead of neurons, it's artificial neurons. Right, we call those perceptrons. So are we essentially trying to replicate the brain's learning process in a computer? In a sense, yes. Neural networks learn by um, adjusting the connections between those artificial neurons, you know, like strengthening or weakening the pathways in our brains. 
when we learn something new. So the more the network learns, the more those connections adapt to the patterns in the data. Exactly. And just like our brains can learn pretty complex things, neural networks can handle some really challenging tasks. Things like image recognition or speech recognition, even natural language processing. Wow, that's amazing. What about deep learning? Is that just a uh, bigger, more powerful neural network? It's not just about size. Deep learning refers to those neural networks that have multiple layers. Think of it like um, a multi-story building versus a single-story house. More layers, more complexity, uh, more power. Right. Deep learning can model much more complex relationships in the data. That's why we're seeing breakthroughs in things like self-driving cars and medical diagnoses. Exactly. It's really pushing the boundaries of AI. Okay, deep learning is clearly a game changer. But how do we ensure these algorithms are actually, you know, doing what we want them to do? That's a crucial question. One key aspect is choosing the right objective function. This function tells the model what it should be aiming for. So it's like setting a goal, making sure the model is focused on the right things. Exactly. We don't want it just memorizing data or getting sidetracked by unimportant details. We want it to learn what's truly meaningful. Makes sense. Okay, before we wrap up this section on neural networks, can you tell me a bit more about reinforcement learning? I know it's another brain-inspired approach, but how does it actually work? Well, it's all about learning through trial and error, just like, you know, craning a dog. You give it a treat when it does something good, maybe a little scolding when it messes up. So the dog learns what works and what doesn't to get that reward. Right, and it's the same idea with reinforcement learning. You have an agent, which could be a program or even a robot, and it interacts with an environment. What kind of environment? Well, it could be anything, really, a virtual game world or even the real physical world. The agent takes certain actions, and those actions result in either rewards or penalties. So in a game, the agent might get points for completing a level or lose points if it, you know, crashes or gets hit. Exactly. And over time, the agent figures out which actions are more likely to lead to those rewards. So it's constantly learning, trying to improve its strategy as it goes. Exactly. And that's what's so exciting about reinforcement learning. It has the potential to solve those really complex problems in ways that uh, we might not even think of. Yeah, I can see it being used in like robotics, or even finance. Oh, absolutely. It's already being used to develop self-driving cars, optimize trading strategies, even make video game characters more realistic. Wow, the possibilities are pretty mind-blowing. So we've covered a lot of ground today, from supervised and unsupervised learning to neural networks and deep learning, even reinforcement learning. It's amazing how machine learning is transforming everything around us. It really is a game changer. Even if you're not you know, planning to become a data scientist, Understanding the basics of machine learning is becoming more and more important. I agree. For students, professionals, anyone really, mm -hmm. you know, it helps us understand the world around us better. Well, there you have it, folks, our deep dive into machine learning. We hope this has given you the knowledge to uh, conquer that exam, impress your colleagues, or maybe just spark your curiosity about this fascinating field. The best way to learn is to keep exploring. So stay curious and who knows what you'll discover. Until next time, happy learning.